Her Majesty the Queen offers encouragement as well as suggestions. She constantly reminds people of the part they must play. She emphasizes that even though they may only be a small group, their role is vital and can influence development. Running concurrently with reforestation projects are royally initiated agricultural projects based on His Majesty the King's self-sufficiency theory. The first demonstration farm was established at Ban Kunta when Her Majesty visited the local hill tribe people. Around two to three hundred came to greet her and asked for jobs. They told her that they had given up drugs, yet nobody hired them. So Her Majesty commanded me to look for farming land for them. She wanted to do a demonstration farm and would hire them to work there. Her Majesty the Queen wanted to create jobs for the poor. So she put together a project combining those who had no skills, who were just laborers, with those who were experienced in agricultural work. The objective was to create a center for food production and a place of learning for those in the surrounding areas. As a result, agriculture and farming brought successful yields, and farmers' livelihoods began to improve. In the past, we used to look upon peasants as the national backbone but they were very poor. However, in the future, peasants and farmers will no longer be that way. If they put into practice what they learn at the demonstration farm, they will generate a good income. When there is a forest, there is water. And the wealth of natural resources, if used carefully and skillfully, can provide a living for all. The rural poor who came here comprised of recent migrants, or people who used to practice the old agricultural methods known as single crop farming. They simply worked on paddy rice farming or cornfields, and when the season ended, they stopped. With the establishment of the project, we broadened their horizons. We show them how to develop vegetable gardens, how to raise aquatic animals like frogs and fish, how to look after cows, and how to grow mushrooms. We train them and they apply their knowledge for the benefit of their community. Once they became skilled, they worked for their own livelihood. Here in these paddy fields, rice is planted. Those who have no rice grains plant corn or grow vegetables. In the old days, we just bought them. But here, it's not necessary to buy rice from the lowlands. We prefer to grow our own. It's better that way. My life has improved a lot since I came to live here. Before, I had nothing. Now I own a tricycle and have money to spend. With money, I get to eat. Nowadays, I can afford things, because she gave me a job when I came to live with her. She found me a job. In the coastal regions of the country, especially the sea in the southernmost provinces of Thailand, Her Majesty's initiatives have also met with success. In the past, fish stocks along the coastal areas east of Naratiwat province were becoming depleted. Large fish populations had disappeared and fishermen had to seek other employment. Around the year 2000, some local fishermen from the Wing district submitted a petition to Her Majesty the Queen, airing their grievances about the hardship of their industry. Acting on her instructions, the fishery department initiated a project to dump old railway bogies into the sea to create artificial reefs. Once the reefs were in place, 
they became excellent habitats for schools of fish, which soon began to multiply. In the old days, we caught just enough to survive on a daily basis. But later on, we began to face problems due to the lack of fish. Since this project has been put into place, there are more fish and we can make more money than in the past. If there were no project, our lives would have been really hard. I should like to thank the Queen for helping us. We love her very much. The Artificial Reef Project is one of many under the Rehabilitation of Natural Resources in the Coastal Regions Initiative, started by Her Majesty the Queen. Together, these projects have brought back sustainable marine life to the ocean and helped to restore Thailand's colorful aquatic scenery. Her Majesty's project for the conservation of marine turtles was established in 1979 as a result of the global depletion in the marine turtle population. Her Majesty expressly wanted to have a location in Thailand for the conservation of marine turtles. Her first goal was to propagate them in their natural environment. Secondly, she wanted to make sure the turtles would be able to breed in the future, even if their own natural environment could no longer sustain them. And thirdly, she wanted to promote the location as a knowledge-based tourist destination for the benefit of the general public. Her Majesty the Queen's environmental projects are located throughout the country. But, like linking rings together into a complete chain, they support each other in maintaining nature's equilibrium, which in turn should bring about a strong, sustainable Thai society. Her Majesty's quest for improved quality of life for all Thai citizens is admirable. We have had the privilege of serving her, so we realize the full extent of her altruistic ideals and compassion towards the deprived poor. She sacrifices herself for the livelihood, happiness and satisfaction of her people. We can feel the enormous depth of humanity in Her Majesty the Queen. I'm very touched. I think of her as a mother who comes and helps. It's like she's helping her child in every conceivable way. I'm so choked up. I, I can't talk. In gratitude, one cannot possibly offer something in kind for a settlement. No, not at all. But I pledge to do well in every way. I shall offer her my good deeds in gratitude. From the ground that was once cracked to the streams that were once dry, Life has returned to the land. It did not happen in a day. It was the result of work over months and years, undertaken by many who acted as one. 
as a result of the vision and humanity of Her Majesty the Queen, who has selflessly worked for the land and her people. Thailand's natural environment is on the mend.